Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Don't Be Kurt. And in this video, we're gonna go back to a project, the mini project. So I had all these hopes and dreams of having a nice chronological series as I'm going along with the car, fixing things in order. And unfortunately, as you've already seen from a video I posted a couple months ago, it broke in a way it was unexpected. And it broke while in the middle of filming the series of doing the stuff we needed to do. So anyhow, we're gonna go back I'm going to start publishing these videos that I already had recorded to kind of get us all caught up to date so that way we can move forward with this mini project. Not that anybody asked for it. I know that. <laughs> and who cares about a, a first gen, well, I shouldn't say first gen, um, an R53 mini, which was, I guess, the first one under full BMW ownership at the time. Um, nobody's asking for it, but I had the car and seemed like something to do, and I'm learning a lot about it. And so I hope you guys enjoy this and share with other people who like R53 Minis. Anyways, back to Kurt from the past. All right. Welcome back, friends. It's Christmas time around here in the St. Louis region. Well, why am I saying St. Louis? Everywhere, come on. But we're getting back to the Mini today. I know we left off the Corvette back to that but the mini actually kind of accelerated some of the plans as i was driving it a couple weeks ago and the rear suspension which i've mentioned before finally gave out completely so we'll be going back to hang with our friends at bimmers or us and we will be getting some work done so getting ready to ride out to curated where we will take over from there but right now i gotta drive a little gingerly because there's no suspension in the back like it legitimately and i'll post a picture here so you guys can see it looked like it was low riding and somehow it recovered back to this but this is still lower than it should be all right we are in the mini had to do a little bit of a jump because i'm sitting here and i have to unhook this thing in here which that little blue light right there is always on. So the previous owner, I guess, had something tapped in. I think that's where my power draw is coming, causing the battery to go flat. So it's real funny. Before, when I knew the suspension was broken in this car, I drove it as if it wasn't. But after that, what happened a couple weeks ago, so I'm here driving this thing gingerly. <laughs> So it doesn't completely collapse on itself because it looked bad. I, I had no idea it was broken. I thought at least I thought the uh, tailpipe was dragging and making such terrible noise. And of course, I wasn't even thinking that. Oh, this would be some good content for you guys to see what all just happened. So we're on our way, and like I said, um, as you guys have seen before, um, the Bimmer's Rose Curated Shop is legitimately actually in my same neighborhood. So this is legitimately. Uh, I'm gonna say legit a lot. It's about a 15 minute walk, so half mile maybe? A half mile at a real leisurely pace, so I'm talking like you're just stopping and sniffing flowers and stuff like that. Um, but we're, our, we're gonna pull up there in a second. And here we are, getting ready to pull in. And here we are, pulling in. And hopefully when we pull out, we have functioning suspension. Now I'll go over that in a second. Um, what my plan is here. Alright, so we made it. We're getting racked up. So let's talk about this here. So remember guys, I told you this is the cheapest Mini. It was $700. Um, and the parts for this car have been relatively inexpensive, but because it's the cheapest Mini, why would we put ex the normal price suspension? So we went with a very inexpensive, inexpensive option called Max Speed Rods. I saw this on a couple other mini forums. The cost was about one fourth the cost of the, any other suspension package. I haven't heard anything bad, so why not? So we're gonna start there and then tires as well. I'm gonna follow some of the other YouTubers and go with Priority Tire and some of their no name brands I've never heard of before and see how we do. So anyways, we will be off to work here in a second. So here at Bimmer's Curated, and we got Coben on the scene, so let's see what we do. And up we go. And this is post checking to make sure it wouldn't fall off the rack, so don't, no comments about that. We did check. Interestingly enough here, looking at this car, these don't look to be near as bad shape as the rear suspension, but it all must be changed. So 
some things noted after taking this off. So these wheels that I have, well, let's walk. Let's take a little walk over here. So these are not stock wheels, and I've always known that. What I have not known was that the hub on the Mini and these wheels are clearly not compatible. Um, as you can see, that is much larger than what's up here. So now I gotta go find myself some proper hub spacers so these fit properly. Or actually what I prefer is actually find the stock wheels that go on this car and put them back on. was going well until dealing with a rusty car and rusty things happen. So getting in here to kind of drill the rest of this out and hopefully we can move on without having to buy a new knuckle. But things happen on old rusty cars. A little bit of a doing a little bit of a junk cut. So with those um, pinch bolt that broke off. I'm off to Mini of St. Louis to get some replacement parts and uh, so we can keep moving on this uh, cheap suspension installation. So um, let's go for a ride. Here we are getting ready to pull up to Mini of St. Louis. I've actually never ever bought parts from here before so uh, first time for everything right? Although I am curious it should I buy more than what I need? Feels like that would probably be the smart move. Let's see, so service is this way. Parking. Yeah, we'll try this spot. So I take a walk into the mini service department. We are off. Back to curate it, get our work done. Take care. Oh, thanks, right, you too. Yeah, you too. And now drive back. To back to work. So I haven't reviewed this car fully yet, but I need to talk about my uh, winter daily because it does winter stuff fine. And other things, but back to it. Things. I'm not sure I've shared before. Vivers Curate is located in the flower district, so you can get your flowers here while you're looking at if you know if you need someone to apologize for after buying a car from them. Works out, I think. This daily driver is its ability to park itself. So I let it do it sometimes. Cause why not, right? Gotta go put it in drive. And it's done. Alright, back in. Parts in hand. Invoice in hand. Z1. Let's see how far Coben got while I was gone. Alright. Hopefully we haven't found any other rusted broken parts because that would be quite unpleasant but not surprising oh it's got safety glasses on it must be serious and finally one of these things are have been freed from their capture And this one was just happy to disconnect. Couldn't even walk over here fast enough. <laughs> All right, so wreath in the hole. They got the fresh bolts. They got all the way through. So one rusty problem almost solved. Yeah. And now testing the new bolt in the newly threaded hole. So we're good, so we should be able to move on with actually move for moving the suspension component and getting them installed. So 
All right, I can, I'll take that victory. We got the new, old is out. If anybody wants it, it'll be in the dumpster out here in St. Louis at some point. Maybe you want a original mini rusted suspension component. Me, man. And here goes the Others who have used this, uh, this component, this little air here for our adjustment is a little bit too big and gets in the way. So we'll be just shaving this down a bit so we can make it clear. These aren't safety glasses, but they're better than nothing, so protect your eyes. As we get ready to cut this down right there. It's to spec with the twin wrench. side on now. So of course after all this I'll have to go get alignments and stuff done but getting these on is the first part of this battle and we're getting the rear all soaked up with some penetrating oil because after this rust battle we'll let these soak for a little while before we attempt to get these out because we gotta go here and here and that should do it, and then we'll be back, and then the tires will arrive in a couple of days, and we'll get that done and go for a real shakedown drive around. I don't even know what to expect because this car's been broken the whole time, so these might, somebody who knows a Mini might be like, oh, this thing rides terribly, but I'm gonna think it dri drives great because I've never driven a proper Mini. All right, so we're done for today as the rear shocks, the mounts are just shot. Should have known that, should have had those parts ahead of time, but you don't know until you pull it down, so we will pause for now and get the rears installed. It might be in the same video, it might not be. So you'll see before I know, do, or you'll see at some point. And we're back, it's day two, delayed by having to get some parts. So in true fashion and doing this right, it might be behoove me to actually get this looking a little bit better since we're changing the suspension and at least make it look pretty. So I'm going to do a little quick dab of some black spray paint and we'll go from there. Something just to make the car look a little less janky. And now on the other side, which we'll never see, but I'll know it's there. I'm gonna note the kit did not come with um, rear shock mounts, so we are recycling what existed on the previous one which is why we had to wait on the parts because the bushing in here was completely gone so I'm pressing this down for maximum safety so we can take this apart without this exploding in COVID space and up we go back into your hole Maybe I should have came here last night, did a little cleaning, but oh well. So the brand new bushings, here's the mount, I'm gonna put these together. Here are the old ones. Again, like I said, these were completely just gone. So getting this back together, get the show together.
opportunity to actually participate appropriately. Now, of course, people watching, it all looks so easy when you have a lift. I'm pretty sure this is a pain in the rear if you're doing this on your back in your garage. That's why it's good to have friends. And I do not take my friendship with my friends here, Bimmers or Russ, curated for granted. Team Mini. Also, while we're looking at this, brakes will be here, but I can probably do this at home. This will be another feature thing, and I'll get these calipers, which I guess were painted by somebody. I don't know if they came red and get these cleaned up. Well, this side's been torqued, but now we'll go until we hear the proverbial click. Instead of a click, we have fancy boobs. <laughs> All right, now we're back on the ground. Tires on, torque down, getting ready to go for the first test run. But before that, just investigating why the OBD2 port stopped working. All right, so just just cutting in here real quick. So this ODB2 port not working here, this was a huge, huge part of the struggle of when the car actually broke that I published about a couple weeks ago, um, no, back in February. And, you know, at the time, I don't know if I initially have it on camera, and Coben had mentioned doing some further troubleshooting in the kick panel. I didn't want to take the car apart any further. I was so excited because we had the suspension on. It should have taken the time because it ended up costing about six to seven weeks of my own troubleshooting before finally getting it back to them where they figured it out, which we have another episode about. So so stay tuned for more lessons in why not to be me in certain certain ways. Now, a lot of times I'm trying to give you all some advice, you know, what to look for in buying a car. But a lot of time, I want you all to see the mistakes I make so you don't do them in your project cars and your day-to-day -day automotive experience. So anyways, back to it. Get a quick look. Right height looks about right. Well, oh, there's always the while you're in there moments. So, discover some blown fuses which contribute to the OBD2 port uh, not providing power. So, getting that taken care of so we can then see why the trunk won't open, which you all know I've been talking about that for a minute. So we'll see if the computer can force the popper to pop. Um, outside of that, other fuses I probably need to check on my own, which is the horn fuse and the fuse for the heated seats and stuff like that in this car. All right, test driving. Can't knock these, these uh, can't knock me. 
breeze too bad. Things feel good. Now we still have the issue now, new issue, where we can't get the ODB, ODB2 port to uh, link to anything. It seems like there's no power to the port, so change the fuses and still nothing, so it's kind of interesting. But overall, I'm happy. So next up is the tires, which haven't arrived yet, and the supercharger pulley kit and some new spark plugs. Settle a little bit. It does look like we might need to make one adjustment though. So a little bit high on the front, or a little too low in the back. Um, but it did feel good. I mean, I didn't take it on the highway. I'm not doing that until tires. Because um, these tires are done. They're beat. But it does feel like a little high up front. Well, for some adjustments, probably maybe an inch high or so in the front. We're not trying to go for perfection, just to get the rake a little bit better. See what it's like after doing a quick hot lap. So in we go. Let's do it. Alright, check engine light's still on and we can't figure it out because of no ECU, but we're in here, round two, test run, let's see how it goes. So when I first introduced the Mini to you guys on the channel, this road was the one I was going on where I about broke my back because of the lack of dampening before. And so what's funny is normally when people go on coilovers and talk about how terrible the ride becomes, but this is again, like I was saying, this is great. No comfy ride as you get in most cars, but for my purposes, this is this is what I need. So let's head back. I think we are all right, provided this thing settled a little bit. charge of work and maybe get a little bit too far going. But for now, this is pretty good. And max speeding rods, um, not bad. I, I enjoy the product. So far, I've been impressed. Um, if anything, this is actually well worth the cost, especially for considering, for me, only buying this car for 700 bucks. Um, the Euro suspension kit was just right for my application. Um, for those who would track stuff and auto crossing, I don't know. I can't say this is perfect for that, but for a replacement suspension kit for a, a old Mini Cooper, it's fine. Alright, so those of you watching this video, if you're in the St. Louis region, it is around December or first week of January 2024. You can find these in a dumpster, South City. You can have them, put them on your Mini. If you want that slam look and break your back, no dampening feel, these are just a ticket. And on that, uh, thanks for watching again. This has been another episode of the world's cheapest mini with the world's cheapest suspension. Coming soon, world's cheapest tires and supercharger job. Um, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, do all those things, and we'll be back.